So my preliminary title is Ethologic Factors Related to Trends in Esophageal Cancer in Tanzania. Um, so this is a picture of ORCI Cancer Center. Um, if you take it right, that's basically where the office was that I was doing my work. And yeah, I'm Richard Watkins. I'm a student at the University of Michigan. All right, so background on esophageal cancer. As you can see from the chart, um, esophageal cancer is pretty prevalent in what they call the esophageal cancer belt of Africa. Um, so the mortali mortality and incidence rate are pretty close together, which is not what we would want. So hopefully if we can learn more about esophageal cancer, um, we can hopefully reduce the mortality rate with more targeted interventions and I guess greater epidemiologic knowledge of uh, the cancer. So there are two main types of esophageal cancer, um, squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Um, squamous cell carcinoma has about a 90% prevalence rate in uh, Tanzania compared to adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is generally tied more to uh, smoking and alcohol consumption, whereas adenocarcinoma is generally thought more of as a diet-related cancer. Um, that's not totally accurate, but that's kind of the generalization of the two. Um, squamous cell carcinoma is in the epithelial cells towards the middle of the esophagus, and adenocarcinoma is in the glandular cells in the lower part of the esophagus. So, as I was saying, the different combination of risk factors influences the histopathology. So, um, different things like smoking, um, tobacco use, diet, uh, even dental health, uh, indoor air pollution, they all play a role in uh, if you develop esophageal cancer and what type of esophageal cancer that you wind up developing. Um, so, yeah. So my project is a continuation of Jamie Gable's project. So from 2006 to 2013, um, she basically was looking at the geographic distribution of esophageal cancer by region in Tanzania. So she has about seven years of data. So my plan was to add an additional three years of data and maybe do a little different things that I'm going to get into in a bit. So the main questions that I have related to this are, is esophageal cancer, is it becoming more prevalent in Tanzania relative to other types of cancer? Um, is the increase that I've seen in esophageal cancer, so based on my data so far, there has been a general increase in the at least the raw number of cases of esophageal cancer. So like trying to figure out what this is caused from and uh, one potential factor not related to common risk factors is actually better screening, so investigating if the health facilities are doing a better job capturing it because there's been an increase is something that I'm interested in. And then also, if that might not be um, the reason that esophageal cancer is increasing, maybe some of the uh, risk factors like smoking are. So methods. Um, when I got to Tanzania, I was planning on doing a purely ethologic study, looking at population level data. Um, so I began doing a literature search on some of the population-based statistics like the census, um, the DHS, and I found a lot of good information. Um, but one of the things I wasn't able to fi find was alcohol prevalence. So um, my project wound up shifting a bit and I wound up abstracting data, but I'll get into that in a bit. So, um, based on my literature search, I found that a lot of factors are related to esophageal cancer prevalence. Um, so, this is a study based out of Kenya, and there are a lot of uh, similar risk factors in Kenya that there are in Tanzania. So, um, as you can see, the consumption of, so some of the local beverages is a popular, uh, I guess, risk factor in Tanz Tanzania, but it's also very hard to measure, so that kind of became a problem. Um, but smoking, uh, hot food, that's another thing that's very hard to measure, um, and so is poor oral hygiene. But some of the other things are easier to measure, like indoor air pollution, smoking, and cooking with uh, coal. So um, 
as I said, I was gathering data from international, national, and a little bit of local literature on some of the alcohol stuff. Okay, so Tanzania uses a hospital-based cancer registry as the um, primary, I guess, surveillance system. Well, it's, it's not even a surveillance system because it's a hospital-based cancer registry. But I guess that wound up presenting some challenges, but um, in general, a lot of the patient records were fairly complete that were paper records because of it being a hospital-based registry. Um, so I went through the ORCI logbook from 2014 to 2016 to find additional esophageal cancer cases. Um, and I found a total of 831 of these cases. Um, so then once I had this list, I pulled the medical records and abstracted data from these medical records, um, looking at different things such as location, um, the hospital they were referred to, religion, alcohol, smoking, um, histopathology, the type of treatment they received, um, if the cancer was invasive, stuff like that. And um, after that, I excluded cases that were listed as the wrong location. So there's about 30, or there's about six cases that were from different countries, not in Tanzania, so Kenya, Malawi. And there were also about 30 cases that were listed as esophageal cancer in the uh, logbook, but actually weren't esophageal cancer. So after I removed these records, there were a total of 715 complete records that I found so far, still working on finding the missing records, and I have an additional 116 that were identified as cases in the logbook, but were not actually like present, or that I could not find. So. Um, Towards the end of 2016, from September to December, um, the records were transitioned to electronic medical records. So for about four months, my uh, records are electronic medical records, not paper medical records. And then also another thing that I came across is because it's a hospital-based registry, there's two other hospitals at certain points, KCMC and Bugondo, that were offering chemotherapy but may have not referred. So it's another potential issue. So here's my methods and pictures. So this is the 2014 logbook. I chose the worst example for a dramatic effect. Um, and then there's the records room, so that's where I would pull the files after I found the case from the logbook. There was a picture of me abstracting the medical records, and that was the most efficient way to wheel the medical records back um, once I picked them. So here's my initial results that I have. It's mostly just uh, demographic data. But as you can see, um, so this is uh, categorical age variables. Um, you can see that from greater than 65 is, I guess, a lot of the cases. So that's 36% of the cases. So esophageal cancer is definitely a type of cancer that usually takes a while for someone to be affected by it. But I think that's going to become more of an issue as the, uh, I guess, the age pyramid changes in Tanzania. So as you can also see, it's a lot more prevalent in men than women. Um, I want to say it's the third most common cancer in men, but the fifth most common in women. Um, so this is generally basically what Jamie also saw in regards to the sex distribution. And then the tobacco use was a lot higher than you would expect for... Um, I guess the national prevalence rate, so around 13% of men report smoking and like 1% of women report smoking, but as you can see, um, I guess a majority of the people that developed esophageal cancer smoked. And then drinking was also a big factor, but it was a bit lower than you would expect as compared to uh, tobacco use. I want to say, I don't know, 60% of people didn't drink or drink infrequently, so it's a little more common than you would uh, expect, but not much. So I also uh, did a table of tobacco use by drinking, so a total of 245 out of uh, 831 patients uh, both smoked and drank. Um, there was a large portion, though, that did not smoke or drink, so it's risk factors, but there are also other causes of esophageal cancer, like I was talking about. 
And then I also want to investigate if religion is a potential protective factor for drinking. Um, and so far, I think that's actually possibly going to be the case. But interestingly enough, um, the amount of Muslims versus Christians that wound up developing esophageal cancer is about what you would expect um, just based on the population, but not what you would expect given that Muslims report lower amounts of drinking. Um, so as you can see here um, on the table over there, um, there are only around, um, I guess, 30% of Muslims do not drink at all compared to 16% of Christians. So I need to explore that more and see if that's a significant difference there. So these are the initial results from the changes in facilities. So I got data from the Ministry of Health that basically classified the hospitals from dispensaries to regional health centers to hospitals. So there were, I guess, I was interested in looking at if the dispensaries, which were the lowest level of health care, impacted uh, the increase in esophageal cancer the most. But this is just a change in the raw number of facilities. But as you can see, um, there's been a pretty big increase in uh, medical facilities from 2010 to 2016. I wasn't able to get data from 2006 through 2009, so I'll probably have to limit my analysis to those six years. Um, and then also, this is the second graph on the right is showing uh, the change in esophageal cancer cases, just the raw number of cases from 2010 to 2016. All right, so proposed future analysis. So I want to calculate the change in incidence rate between 2006 and 2016. So like Jamie was doing with the regional analysis, I want to see if the epidemi epidemiology has changed since 2006 through 2016. She found that certain areas have higher concentrations of esophageal cancer. So I want to see if that's changed in relation to risk factors having also increased. So maybe that's actually not related to population characteristics there and more related to access to health care. And if that's the case, then I would expect previously low incidence areas to have an increase in esophageal cancer. Um, so I want to determine where there has been a change in this. Yeah. And then so also employ a multiple linear regression to see if some of the population-based risk factors have higher prevalence in uh, certain geographic areas that have higher esophageal cancer. And then uh, future student research. So compare risk factors that are recorded at ORCI by cancer type. Um, I think an interesting analysis would be to maybe do one year of all of the cancer cases and see if the risk factor distribution is the same for each type of cancer. So are we seeing the same rates of smoking and esophageal cancer cases that we're seeing in breast cancer cases um, or something like that? There's quite a lot of cases for a year, so I think you'd have to limit it to a year. Um, so then also, uh, this is something that Taylor was also, Taylor Sullivan was kind of talking about, um, I guess, as they transition to electronic medical records, seeing if there's been a change in the quality of records would be something that would be interesting. I'm not sure if it fits this institution exactly and this project, but I think that would be an interesting research question that could do a lot of good. And then um, also it would just be interesting to see, to have, I guess, a control group for um, different types of risk factors to see if, I guess, the sick population at the National Hospital Mohimbili has the same risk factor distribution as patients at ORCI on things like smoking and drinking habits. Uh, the strengths of my study, um, this is kind of a strength, I guess, of the project is it was nice to be in, uh, I guess, direct collaboration with uh, Dr. Cajesa because he was second in charge of the hospital. That's not something that you would experience in the U.S., so it definitely enabled getting access to information that would probably have been harder to get. Um, another strength is that there's potentially 10 years now of records of esophageal cancer to look at, so that's quite a good sample size to see if epidemiology has changed. And then also the medical records, because they were paper, I think they were of higher quality than what the electronic records wound up being. So I think 
most of the medical information is fairly complete and fairly good, so I think that was a strength. Um, limitations, so yeah, there's a lot of limitations. <laughs> um, so there was a lot of medical records that were missing. Um, I wound up getting around 14% missingness. I'd like to get under 10%, so um, that was closer to what Jamie was able to get. Um, some of the information just isn't filled out in the medical record, so even on some different variables, you might have 70 missing, I don't know, smoking statuses, even for complete uh, records. Um, there's still a lot of gaps in the national and international surveys, so I was really surprised not to find very good detailed information on alcohol prevalence for Tanzania. Um, a hospital-based registry would probably be better, or a national registry would probably be better at, I guess, determining the true number of cases if they didn't get referred to ORCI eventually. Um, and then also it was often hard to find the first level that they were referred to. So I talked about wanting to look at dispensaries, which are the primary clinics, and seeing, um, I guess, comparing where they were referred to, but oftentimes they would just have the regional hospital. So you couldn't get as fine of a location as you would like. Um, the learning experience. So abstracting medical records actually teaches you a lot about medicine. So that's kind of a cool experience in itself. Um, and the cancer in general. Um, and then it was good to be in the CEASE program where I had a lot of connections and outside support and support on the ground. Um, and then, but like I said, everything actually changes once you get on the ground. It's very hard to actually, uh, I don't know, tell Dr. Solomon, this is what my project's gonna be. And then he's probably like, of course it is. Um, but once you're there, I don't know, everything changes and you just gotta adapt. Um, and like I said, my dad is not perfect, but uh, I guess it's kind of a rewarding experience to actually go through the medical records and, I don't know, try and fight and get the data as clean as you would like it to be. And then lastly, I guess just going along with that, be flexible. Um, so it was a month before I started actually abstracting medical records because I thought I was going to do something else. But uh, I guess be willing to change and always be doing something. Uh, future career plans and goals. Um, primarily interested in working in government or nonprofit work. Don't know exactly what I want to do, but um, this experience actually made me a lot more interested in cancer epidemiology. So that was pretty cool. Um, but I also had kind of some experience doing surveillance level work at uh, local government, so that's something of interest also. And then lastly, me feeding a mango, a monkey, a mango at ORCI, but I guess it's not going to play. So that's sad. But if anyone wants to see that, they can ask me about it. Questions? Yes. Do you have any theories about um, why receptors like diet or smoking are changing? Um, in general, smoking, it seems to be increasing in Tanzania. I think a lot of that has to do with economic reasons. Um, as far as diet, it's it was hard to get good information on that. Um, I don't know if diet's changing unless it's becoming more Western, but I don't know if the consumption of hot beverages, which is something that's often linked to esophageal cancer, is changing a lot. I wasn't able to find a lot of literature on local uh, brews and stuff like that, but... Yeah, it would be interesting to get in touch with a nutritional epidemiologist on that. So, Richard, I, I think uh, I'm thinking about the comparison between the patients from the three sources, ORCI, Mohimbili, and case KCMC. And I think you can answer this question when you analyze your data later on, or it could be a future project for another student. The differences between the cases from the three places and from an etiologic standpoint, and also from a management standpoint. Uh, do you have any idea from your uh, quick? Um, I'd say it's, it can be kind of hard probably to compare Mohimbili to ORCI because there's not really a way, unless it's specifically written in the medical file, to determine if the patient was referred to ORCI to Mohimbili or Mohimbili to ORCI. So I think there's a lot of overlap there. Um, 
So I think the comparison might actually be better between like Mohimbili and KCMC. Um, as far as the differences between the patients, um, I would say there's probably a, if there is a significant difference in religion, I think there could be a significant, well, a significant difference between religion leading to alcohol consumption and the patients, because KCMC is primarily in Kilimanjaro, which is a more Christian area compared to Mohimbili. Um, but often it can be hard to see where the patient was referred to from Mohimbili. So, I mean, they could have been referred to from somewhere else, but that not be listed on the medical record. So I think that's a challenge that you'll run into if you attempt to do that. Well, um, I'm always interested in, in use of hospital-based registries that, that aren't really population-based. And to the geography of this huge country, um, with the cancer center on the coast at one end of, of the country, um, makes these, uh, these estimations difficult. Um, so esophageal cancer is, is a cancer that might be treated by surgeons alone with uh, no radiation or chemotherapy. Could be done at a regional hospital with a good chest surgeon um, and never reach the cancer center in uh, Dar es Salaam. So I've, I've been to this country several times and, and know that the transportation system is not very convenient and the country is very large. Um, and so um, the question is, uh, we, we know that the Kilimanjaro region, Jamie identified that as a sort of hot spot. It's way at the north of the country. And uh, so, like you mentioned, uh, collection of data from regional clinics might be a way to identify whether this is truly a problem. And, and also, I, I'm reminded that Many years ago, when I first studied esophageal cancer in the United States, that esophageal stricture was a precursor to adult cancer. And esophageal stricture at the time was <clears throat> very common, well, uh, a problem of kids who were uh, got into the uh, uh, household cleaning products under the kitchen sink and drank liquid plumber or something like that and caused esophageal stricture. Um, in a developing country like Tanzania, um, you know, they probably don't have uh, childproof latches on their uh, kitchen sink cabinets. Uh, and I just wonder if you observed any of this sort of esophageal stricture problem. Um, is this what you refer to as like the barium swallow problem? Oh, no, okay. This, okay. This, this, these are caustic agents uh, that, that people commonly keep under the kitchen sink. Uh, liquid plumber, all kinds of bad stuff. And, uh, and, and kids, uh, if unsupervised, can, can get into the cabinet and open these and, and drink them. They have sometimes they taste good, um, but they don't have childproof caps on their bottles like we do. All of this has occurred in this country in the last 25 years. Before that time, um, it was a problem in our country. And I saw it thinking, well, I wonder if esophageal stricture might be a precursor in, in Tanzania. It might be. Um, the youngest patient that I had was 16, so I think at which is young, but I guess if it's generally, I don't know, eight-year-olds drinking bleach, I think there's still a pretty far gap between even the youngest patient getting esophageal cancer and that patient. So it's interesting, but I don't know how you'd go about investigating it. One of, one of the things that, that's happening in this country is that the distribution of adenocarcinoma versus squamous cell carcinoma seems to be changing with more adenocarcinomas uh, happening. That might be something to sort of look at in your data, too, to see if the incidence of adenocarcinoma, both because of better pathology I'm reading, and um, actually probably more related to reflux, you know, that, that, that reflux esophagitis is probably related to development of lower esophageal adenocarcinoma, which is a lot like stomach cancer. Yeah. To begin with. 
Uh, so that's that's the first thing. The, the second thing is, um, is is there a layering of smoking control programs that, that happened during the time you were there? Or uh, if not, is this a message you can give to people that you know that it, this appears to be related to smoking? Here's another piece of information to to um, to uh, uh, really develop smoking control programs. Um, you know and. And the third thing, you know, in, in, in terms of a quality improvement program, I think you've, you've really gone into the medical records. And one of the other things you could do with your data is, you know, write a sort of uh, qualitative improvement, quality improvement project of how to get better data, you know, that you leave with the second in charge of the Ocean Road Hospital to sort of say, you know, these are, these are some tools that might help you uh, in the future to actually not have it as hard as it was for me to attract the data for this particular thing and so you're really being prospective about that but you've got a unique perspective on it because you've gone into so many cases and seen what the, the good and the bad things about the data are and you know what's good and, and you know what's bad and you can report that to other people. Thank you.